Hey guys, I'm back again. Got the good wrench motor running and um, Bren, great. Um, but I did have an issue after putting in the high volume oil pump. Uh, oil pressure was great. Now I got 45 pounds at idle, hot idle. Might be a little bit much, um, but whatever. Anyways, um, they don't have the greatest uh, valve seals on them. You know, the exhaust has an O-ring on the valve stem, and then the intake has kind of a, a rubber style, almost like an umbrella seal, maybe a little bit better. And uh, for whatever reason, I think I'm getting a lot of oil in the heads. They just, it's smoking, especially on startup. I don't want to deal with that. One of my biggest pet peeves is an engine that burns oil, smokes. I, I just can't deal with that especially when i know i have the capabilities of making it not happen i tried to go cheap on the crate motor not do anything with the heads i ended up deciding um kind of bit the bullet and got a set of dart um, summit 165 cc cast iron heads and uh yeah you know, as you guys will come to see i can't really leave anything alone that's just kind of my makeup i've been a, an engine guy started when I was 13. I'm 37 now, so you do the math. I've literally, that was when I built my first motor. Uh, I was 13 and I've been studying this stuff and, and working with really smart engine guys and learning all I can uh, my whole life. And, uh, you know, I do this stuff for a living. You know, we fix every kind of car, um, do a lot of muscle car stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, like, like this here, this engine, you know, looks pretty sweet to most people, but it's actually a mess. Um, it's got a lot of the wrong parts in it, wrong intake manifold, way too much camshaft. Um, guy wants to be able to have AC, power brakes, and still make power. So we're going to do a hydraulic roller setup and uh, run a better intake and carb setup and uh, port match everything and, you know, make it work real good. But back to my... Dart Summit heads. Um, I just got the first one. The other one will be here next week. I wanted to show what I do when I prep a set of heads. I know there's a lot of videos out there of guys pouring these and, and doing other things to them. I just wanted to kind of show. I'm not. I wouldn't say that I'm a pro head porter. You know, I don't have an SF 600 bench over in the corner, and that's not what I do all day every day. But I have enough experience in it and on a bench to know a little bit about what works, what's going to be a good gain, what's probably going to make you go backwards. And um, on these heads, since this motor's probably going to be 350, 375 horse even maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Um, it doesn't need probably any more flow than these heads come with, but I can't leave anything alone. So I'm going to make them the best I can with the least amount of time. Um, not making intake ports. I'm not hogging anything out. Basically doing a bowl blend. Um, basically uh, cut the guides down. Just skinning up the guide bosses a little bit. Um, looks a little different in the video than it does in real life. Um, went around the chambers. And you could see here around the exhaust port uh, where they cut the uh, exhaust seat. You see that big ridge that comes up. Um, above where the valve sits. Try to take out as much of that as possible to improve exhaust flow. These have pretty horrible exhaust numbers from Dart, Summit, whatever, like 138 CFM. Well, stock heads full more than that. So what I did was I bowl blended them, blended the short turns, and um, let's see if that'll focus. There we go. Um, the more you can make that short turn like a waterfall, the better. Um, you don't want any jigs or jags or huge bumps up in the middle of it um you know nice and smooth you know try to imagine you're the air <laughs> um same with the intake short turns try to blend them into the seat and uh, you'll get your best gain for the least amount of money um if it's one thing you don't have to do you don't have to skinny the guide bosses but i do just because i want that extra couple cfm it, it doesn't add a whole lot but everything combined makes a good gain. Um, and again, on the chambers, the other thing I do, you'll notice on this chamber, you see how much of the uh, spark plug 
uh, sticks in, it doesn't really protrude very much into the chamber. It kind of gets blocked off a little bit. Um, I open that up just to try and make it, uh, give it a little bit of help, a um, little bit more efficient burn. These have a really nice chamber, even though they're 72 cc. Um, Dart has the same chamber in all their iron heads. They just cut the valve seat deeper, uh, valve job deeper, depending on what chamber size you get. So that's why the flow numbers seem to drop as the chamber size goes up. Um, anytime you make that short turn shorter, um, you're gonna kill some flow, especially uh, up high. But uh, hopefully we can gain some of it back. These heads, I'd like to see them flow in the 230, 235 range on the intake at 500 and uh, 175 plus on the exhaust, same lift. That would be plenty of power, uh, plenty of flow for what I'm doing. Um, these heads would even support more power than that. Um, but main thing is good throttle response, good low end torque, um, part throttle drivability, um, and all that. Just uh, not trying to make something that is a race only head. I've seen a lot of guys um, go hog wild on the exhaust ports. Well, a lot of your torque comes from the size of the exhaust port. So here, here's a, this is what the stock, it's a little bit difficult to see. But that's the stock size on the Dart Summit 165 head. This is with the Guide Boss skinnied and the short turn blended into the bowls. Let's see if it can focus there. Not real good. Yeah, I need, need a better camera. I won't even do anything with the exits of the exhaust ports. I will uh, I'll basically I might clean them up just a touch. But I'll basically leave those stock size. Um, the intake ports basically are going to stay stock sized. I will port match them, so there will be a small amount of work done, but it's not going to be much. You can see the difference between. I know the lighting kind of sucks. I'm sorry about that. Um, but you can see the difference in that port versus that port you know we have a much better shot at the valve you know the longer the air can go straight towards the back of the valve the better and the, you know if i wanted to make these heads flow really well obviously you would enlarge them um, but you would also make the short turn wider and um, when you hear somebody say they're laying back the short turn all that basically means is see you have your this short turn here and you see how this one's been laid back Basically, you're just removing material and making that, that corner easier for air to flow. Now, after I'm dan done basically um, sanding the short turn with uh, cartridge rolls, I will take some emery cloth, like 80 grit, whatever. And I'll take and put some on my finger, and I'll roll my finger over that short turn a whole bunch and take any, uh, any steps that might be in the short turn out. And that just helps the air turn that corner better. Um, See the exhaust short turn stock, that big ridge right below the valve seat? Yeah, that's no bueno. You see that one? See how there's no ridge? You got a nice waterfall shape turning out the exhaust port. And also on the chamber side, you see how I've basically helped funneled the exhaust flow into the exhaust port. Whereas if you look at on the stock port, it's very, uh, where they cut, use the seat cutter, you know, it's, they leave a huge ridge there. So I just basically, I'm not trying to really enlarge the, the chamber at all. It's already, this motor is only going to be about 8.8 .8 to 1, a little over that. So it's not going to be huge on compression, but, so I don't want to remove much material there. These are my tools of the trade. First thing I do is I'll take an intake and an exhaust valve and I'll, Basically, I'll lap in a couple of valves because I want to see where the valve seat, um, where the actual valve is going to seal. Is I'm getting very close to that um, with the grinder, and I'm doing it freehand. So you have to be extremely careful not to hit the valve job. Otherwise, well, you're going to be out probably a couple hundred bucks paying a machine shop to recut the seat. I don't want to deal with that. These are brand new. Um, if I'm careful, don't have a problem. 
Uh, this one went was out a hitch. I've done a lot of them. I've never hit a seat to the point where I had to have it repaired. Knock on wood, because next thing I know that'll happen. Um, this is a Dotco grinder. They're expensive. I bought this like 10 years ago for 600 bucks. Um, I planned on doing way more cylinder heads than I actually do, so that's why I bought that. I worked for a place in Canada that did CNC, iron, and aluminum heads, and uh, they do excellent work, and so I was starting to learn how to do the CNC deal and uh, learning how to uh, make heads flow well and things like that, so just taking what I've learned there top of my own experience and dyno experience, and um, I've done a few sets of these heads. last one that I did was a 355 that was only about 9 to 1, but it had a hydraulic roller cam, and uh, that was the XR270 HR comp cam with a ported factory aluminum intake, like an Edelbrock 650, nothing fancy carb. Headers, um, ported Dart SS, uh, Summit heads, whatever you want to call it. I did those heads maybe a little bit farther than these ones. And that was in a full-size Chevy truck, and uh, yeah, I mean it, it smokes the tires through overdrive, and uh, I think it the owner wrapped it around a tree, so it didn't take him long. He wanted power. I was conservative on everything because I was concerned that he wouldn't be able to handle. You know, most people think they know what 400 horsepower feels like or 350. Well, that can get you in trouble real quick on the street if you're not careful and you're not used to that kind of power. And, you know, I've been on the dyno a lot, and it takes a lot more work than most people think to even get the most out of your own engine. Um, I could never do it just on the street. I can get it probably pretty close, but I guarantee you within half an hour, an hour on the dyno, I will have found power that I would have never found otherwise. You know, it's, it's expensive, so, you know, on an engine like this, it doesn't need to be done. You know, I've already ran it on the stand, broken the cam. It runs excellent. Plugs look great. Um, I just have that one issue that I get to fix. So I'm going to get these ported up and um, put them back on the motor. And, you know, we got to get new head gaskets because the Felpro steel shims, rubber-coated ones, you can't reuse. Um, and intake gaskets. And once I get intake gaskets, I'll be able to... I will take some permanent marker and I'll mark around the intake ports. Just basically contrast and then I'll take a scribe and I'll scribe out my intake ports just to see how far off they are and then I'll probably port match just the entrance ways a little ways in blend it um, but it won't be anything crazy I want to keep the airspeed high in these and it, it's going to be these are a pretty small port basically stock um, but these heads actually work really good um, and for 700 bucks a set I don't think you can beat it yeah, there's aluminum heads you can buy that are really cheap, made in China, which, whatever, you know, made wherever. Um, these actually have parts that I trust, and and honestly, the machine works excellent. Um, they're great for mild setups. Um, you know, they don't come with guide plates. You know, you use a self-guided rocker, or you let the head guide it with the push rod. As I have a self-guided rocker, so I actually am going to open these holes up because... You don't want to have both. You don't want to have a self-guided rocker and it being guided by the uh, push rod hole in the head. So, anyways, just a couple little tips. The valves that come with these heads are awesome. They're stainless steel. They're back cut intake and exhaust. So, yeah, um, great head for the money. Um, you would think they even cost more money, honestly, this day and age. But they're still a good deal, and uh, people are finding out and. You know, last time I bought a set, they were 630 Now they're 700 So, hell, I'm sure it's just going to go up from here. So, anyways, I'm going to get back to work. I will post a new video soon when I get more done. Thanks.